Welcome to Insured Investors, where we share practical real estate investing tips with an insurance twist. I'm your host, Brooke Beats. Let's get started. For our very first episode, we are discussing loss settlement methods. Choosing between actual cash value and replacement costs provides a lot of confusion for investors, especially when it comes to how their claims will be paid out in the instance of a loss. So, we brought in an insurance claims expert, Zach Baker. Zach is the Director of Client Experience at National Real Estate Insurance Group. He heads the team that acts as a liaison between the client and the insurance carrier during the claims process. Zach started in the insurance industry 18 years ago as a claims intern in college. Here, he found the industry's stability and ability to help people appealing and never looked back. Zach and his wife had a condo rental for seven years, but now keep busy fixing up their downtown Kansas City home built in 1900. Welcome, Zach. Hi. It's been fun. Yes, downtown <laughs> Kansas City. That must be fun, huh? Yeah. So we've you know, worked on one room a year, remodeling it over the last 11 years, and I don't have any experience fixing up houses, but I do now. Wow. So it's been fun. Yes. Wonderful. Well, glad to have you here talking about Lost Settlement. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how claims are determined. Yeah, so when you file a claim with your insurance company, they're going to figure out how much they owe you for the damages. Um, the first thing they're going to do is go out and inspect the property, write an estimate for how much the damages are, and then how much you're actually paid depends on what your deductible is, and then the predetermined loss settlement method that you've selected for your policy. Okay. What exactly is a loss settlement method? In a lot of ways, it is exactly what it sounds like, which is their method of determining how much you're going to get paid. Um, and in the property insurance space, there's generally one of two options. You're going to have actual cash value or replacement cost. Um, and the difference between those two is just how it handles depreciation. Okay. And in reg, you offer both. We do. Yeah. And the reason that you have to have depreciation involved is more or less because in property insurance, Unlike auto insurance and some of the other products, there just isn't a market for used building materials. Um, and insurance is designed to pay you for what the property is worth. So because you can't go buy used drywall, the insurance companies have to start with how much does new drywall cost, and then they make a deduction based on how old the drywall is currently. And then that's how much they figure out what the actual cash value is. Okay. So that's a good way to think about depreciation. It's mm -hmm. just like the, the state of what it's in compared to what it was originally. Yeah. And again, when we think about the principles of insurance and what it's designed for, again, is to indemnify you for what was damaged, and that means what was it worth at the time that the loss happened. And so this is just a way that the insurance companies use to figure out you know, what's drywall and cabinetry and flooring worth at the time of the loss. Okay. Does NREG send out the adjuster? No, so we don't file, the, we don't handle the claims in any way. We, again, like you mentioned, we are the liaison um, with the companies themselves, they're the ones that will hire the adjusters and they're the ones that will actually send out the person or do it virtually and do the inspection and figure out what's the damage exposure, how much is it, um, but we're happy to help and we do step in and help facilitate conversations, but we don't actually inspect or pay the actual claims. What's the difference between actual cash value and replacement cost? So it's all about how the depreciation is handled. Both uh, loss settlement methods have depreciation, um, they consider depreciation. Um, but with actual cash value, you're going to be paid for what the property is worth, and then that's the end of the settlement for you. Um, replacement costs, the depreciation can be recovered um, up to depending on how much you actually spend on the repairs. So a good example to think through, like if you have a partial loss, kitchen fire, um, and you have $30,000 worth of damage, the adjuster comes out, they write an estimate for the damages, it's $30,000 to fix. Um, if $15,000 of depreciation is assessed, the kitchen's used half of its useful life, um, if you have actual cash value and you have a three thousand dollar deductible, your settlement will be twelve thousand dollars. So you've got the fifteen thousand dollar actual cash value minus your three thousand dollar deductible. You're going to pay you twelve thousand, and that's it um, for your claim. Now, what you do with that money is up to you. If you want to do the repairs, you can do it. Um, if you want to, you know, use the money for other things, you want to sell the property, you have those options as well. Now, one thing to think about. If you don't do the repairs, the, if you have damage to that kitchen in the future, the insurance company is not going to pay for the same damage twice. So if they've paid for it once, you don't do the work, they're not going to include that in any future claims. But technically, you can use the money for whatever you want. Um, if you do the repairs and if you have replacement cost coverage, let's say it costs $20,000 to fix the kitchen, um, the $5,000 of the extra above the ACV, you could, you could recover from the insurance company. 
Um, and your total payout would be seventeen thousand. So it'd be the twenty thousand dollar total minus your three thousand dollar deductible. You get to pay that regardless, um, but your settlement would be seventeen total. So it really has to do with the depreciation. It's getting assessed at the beginning, no matter what. And as a matter, of, if you have replacement cost, you can recover that. Um, once you do the actual work, if you have actual cash value, you don't recover the depreciation. Um, this you have to be out of pocket the additional. So as an investor, how do I know which one to select? So there's a lot of things to consider. Um, one, and probably the biggest one is, if you imagine worst case scenario, the whole building burns down, um, what would you do with the property? If you would fix it up, um, then replacement costs might be a good option. If you would just clean the land and sell it or do nothing with it, um, replacement costs might not be a good choice because, again, you have to do the repairs to realize the depreciation recovery. If you would never intend to do the repairs, it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend the extra money on replacement cost coverage. Um, and it costs a roughly 20 to 25% more on your premiums for replacement costs. So there is a cost that's a, a part of that because, again, the insurance company is going to pay more. Um, so beyond what you would do with the repairs, and, you know, worst case scenario, um, if you think through what is your financial picture and what's your appetite for risk, mm -hmm. as with anything, you're trading a known risk, which is your premium payments for an unknown. So you don't know if you're going to have to pay for depreciation. You don't know the extent of a potential loss you may have. Um, See, so it's the classic insurance trade. You're trying to figure out what's known and what's unknown. Um, one thing to think about, though, is unlike some other trades that you have in insurance, the trade-off for um, potential risk when it comes to depreciation, it's not static. It's not staying the same. Um, so if you think about your, if I want to pay for a policy that has fewer perils that are covered, my total exposure is still the amount of money I'm paying for the property, how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to depreciation, that amount's changing constantly. Um, every year that goes by, the property's getting older, so your depreciation percentage is getting higher. Um, the cost of repairs, we've seen the cost of repairs and construction materials go up astronomically in the last few years. The higher and more expensive things are to repair, the more your depreciation exposure is, because it's a percentage. Um, and so if you think about, we're trying to decide, I want how, much, you know, how comfortable am I self-insuring the depreciation it's not a static number. And when you have age getting older every year and the cost of goods going up every year, those compound on each other and actually can make your exposure on the depreciation um, quite substantial over time. Um, so it's comfort with your self-insurance of the depreciation. Um, that's another big one. And then another one is just, it does your lender require it? If your lender requires replacement costs, then you don't have a choice. That's mm -hmm. the route you're going. Uh, but if you do have a choice, those are some of the things you want to think about. And also probably as an investor, thinking about my overall business strategy and business model, right? How many locations do I have? Because mm -hmm. that could definitely affect the coverages that I'm selecting. Yeah. If I have a, a lot of locations, yeah. And how old they are. Yep. Um, if you have a lot of relatively new locations or remodels have happened relatively recently, your depreciation exposure is going to be lower than if you have you know structures and properties that are significantly older. Um, because again, the older they are, the more depreciation is going to be assessed. And that means you're going to have to self-insure that depreciation if you go ACV rather than replacement cost. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest taking into consideration geographical locations around the country? Does that matter at all? The only place I can see that coming into play is just if you're in an area where the cost of repairs might be significantly more. Um, so the cost of labor or cost of materials is substantially higher. Uh, again, if it's a percentage, the higher or the larger um, the cost of repairs and you have a certain percent for depreciation, that dollar amount is going to be higher um, the more expensive it is to do the repairs. So that might be the only consideration geographically. Yeah, that's a great point. So you said that replacement cost is potentially 20 to 25 percent more. Mm -hmm. But what is the what is the breakdown of that actually look like? Like how, how am I paying for the actual cash value versus replacement cost? So in most, um, with most insurance companies, they have they do it a little bit differently than we do in our program. Um, they have an endorsement that you would pay for that would give you replacement cost coverage on your policy. Um, in our program, you are going to select a higher total insurance value um, in order to get the replacement cost coverage, and there's different thresholds. Um, and so the, pers the amount of money that you would pay per square foot is going to be more if you want to get the replacement cost than if you're going to stick with the ACV. Um, so again, that's roughly 20 to 25% more insurance um, for, our prop for the properties in our program in order to hit the threshold to get replacement cost. 
Um, so it's set up a little bit different than some of the more traditional uh, insurance companies. You're getting more value as well because you're getting a higher total um, insurance limit for your property. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a replacement cost and you're also insuring it for a higher value should you have a, a total loss uh, claim of some kind. So it's not just replacement cost, you're accomplishing a couple things at once, but that's how we do it in our program. Okay. What should real estate investors consider when choosing a settlement method, other than what we've already talked about? So I think really the biggest one, again, is just what's their appetite for the unknown and self-insuring um, portions of the claim or portions of the loss to a property. Mm -hmm. um, again, you've got the fact that depreciation is not static and just that alone will, most people will decide they either are comfortable with uncertainty or they're not comfortable with uncertainty. And if they're not comfortable with uncertainty, then going replacement cost might be the best route because then you know you're always going to get settled at what it costs you to do the repairs. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're more comfortable with uncertainty and you're willing to roll in that direction, then actual cash value can be a good option. Again, it, it's, it's cheaper, so you can save some money there. There is a balance between the money you would save on premium versus what you would have to come out of pocket for doing the actual repairs, uh, but it can save you money um, if you are comfortable with that um, risk and uncertainty. And then the other thing to consider is just, are you handy yourself? Um, like at the top, like, there's some things I could do at my house. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have to hire out. So if somebody's handy themselves and could do some of the work, they might be able to do the repairs for the cost of the ACV. Um, or if they have a contractor that they work closely with and have a good relationship with who can do the work for um, a lower cost, then they may not need the replacement cost coverage because then you're paying for something that, again, you won't ever realize the benefit. If you can do the work for the ACV, then you don't need the replacement cost because you've got enough funds to do the repairs. So everyone's situation is different. The relationships are different. Their own skills are different. Um, so it really just kind of depends on the mix of all those factors and which, you know, which direction makes the most sense for them. So I think as with anything insurance, it feels like it's a complicated topic and a to complicated issue, but when you really boil it down, it really just has to do with the loss of a method is just about the depreciation and what happens to it. Um, actual cash value, you don't recover depreciation, so you get paid for the damages and what everything is worth on the day that it's damaged. Um, means you might have to come out of pocket if you want to replace with new, but that's how much you're getting paid and the depreciation is not recoverable. Uh, replacement cost coverage is you get paid up to what you spend um, for the repairs, you know, lesser deductible. So they'll pay for new materials and new repairs. Um, and so there's, there's more coverage there. It comes at a cost. Um, and so, again, it, it's really all about what do you want to get out of the insurance, what are your priorities, what's your comfort with risk. But at the end of the day, Actual cash value and replacement cost, the only difference between the two is, is the depreciation recoverable or not? Replacement cost it is, and actual cash value it's not. Well, you have given us Thanks. a lot to a lot to think about. Thank you so much for all the information. Yeah, it has been fun. We will continue to post new episodes every other Wednesday on NREG's YouTube channel. That's N-R-E-I-G, and on Spotify at Insured Investors. You can also follow NREG on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you have topic ideas or questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'll see you soon.